Now let's remember the three components of our brand mantra. We have the emotional modifier and the emotional modifier brings the feeling you want people to share with you with your project. The descriptive modifier will explain, describe how you make things different from competition. And finally, the brand function position your domain of activity. And remember that the brand mantra has to be made of three to six word maximum. The word you will choose for the brand for creating your brand mantra must be very specific. And you must choose them as a function of three parameters that will contribute to increase the impact of your brand mantra to, to help you communicate your message uh, much more better. First, this word must be strong. That means they must, of course, fit with one of the targets, the emotion, the description, the brand, but they must come with a clear and high impact. Do not use two generic words. Do not use people. It's better to focus on family than people because people is too generic. Family, it's a word that, of course, describe a specific, of course, family if your business, your project is dealing with family. But the group is a way to not only describe more specifically who are the users you are targeting, but also communicate a feeling, share a value about the group. Uh, the same with sport versus athletic. Sports describe an activity, but athletic describe not only an, an activity, but also a specific way to proceed with this activity. Secondly, your words must be very clear you must avoid as much as possible any confusion in the type of message and the content of the message you want to communicate. Don't use too global, too generic words. Don't use words like best, the best, or innovative. Words like best or innovative, initially they look like strong words because if you say you are the best, you expect that you are the first. But actually, everybody can use it and they are not specific because they can apply to anything. So your word, the choice of your word must be focused on not only being strong with a lot of meaning, a, a clear description, but also being able to deliver a clear message. And finally, your word must be clearly chosen in a way they are well balanced. Well balanced means they are not too generic, of course, but they are not too specific. They are not too technical. Let's assume that you work on thermoelectric materials. So the thermoelectricity is a property of some solids to generate electricity when they are exposed to a temperature gradient. If you want to describe the function of your project, of your company, yes, you could say that it's about thermoelectricity. But this is a little bit too narrow. This is a little bit too specific to really being able to attract people with no scientific or engineering expertise. Instead of that, you can choose to use words like energy or like uh, sustainability, because if you can develop a system using the thermoelectric property of some materials, it's a way to generate energy in a sustainable way. We can review now some brand mantra created by some big companies. So the first example is from Nike. And the brand mantra, you see it, it's authentic athletic performance. The emotional modifier is authentic. The descriptive modifier is athletic. And the brand function is performance. Of course, you know that Nike is making sport outfit or well, selling sport outfit and shoes. 
that they want to position themselves in a specific domain of sport and sport outfit. When you look at their tagline, it's just do it. For the internal purpose, don't forget the brand mantra, it's mostly for the internal purpose, but the tagline for the outside and the brand mantra for the inside must of course align. Because they want to set the priority to a specific way to practice sports, the way when you challenge yourself, when you will try to go further, higher, faster, they uh, chose a very good selective set of words and you see that these words they are strong, they are clear and they are well balanced. Authentic athletic performance. Each of them are totally aligned with their respective function. The emotional modifier, the descriptive modifier, the brain function. We could be surprised that they decided to use authentic because initially we don't see any connection with sport. But when you think about what they claim and the, what the, the way they want to, to work and the people they want to interact with, if you challenge yourself, if you want to run the extra miles, if you want to run faster, if you want to to go to the next top part of the, of the hill, you cannot lie to yourself. Either you manage to do it or you don't. Either you manage to go a step beyond or you don't. And this is about being authentic, tr not claiming things, but being true to yourself. So that's why it comes. And the same with the uh, performance, because performance is not about sport, it's actually going further, going higher, etc. So the brand mantra that Nike came with is actually that communicate and for the internal purpose that apparently fits with the vision that the, the, the company wants to achieve. Now let's see the brand mantra uh, created by Patagonia. So Patagonia is a company that uh, sell outdoor outfits. And the company actually is mostly used by people who feel comfortable when they are uncomfortable, when they are outside, when it's cold, when it's rainy, when it's in the snow, when you're in the middle of nowhere. The so Patagonia created also a very, very strong and very effective brand mantra. And the component, you see the component of the brand mantra are eco-friendly, weatherproof, and fashion. Nothing about adventure, nothing about sport, nothing about outside activity. But all these three words actually fit perfectly with their function. Eco-friendly is the emotional modifier and that's something that Patagonia, for internal purpose and also for outside communication, claim. Everything they do, it's based on the fact that they use sustainable resources, so their process is eco-friendly. And of course, eco-friendly resonates with some value that people uh, going or living outside will share because they want to go in the they want to enjoy the nature but they don't want to destroy the nature so the internal message of patagonia for their employees and the way they work is that because they are devoted to help people who are environmental friendly they want to adopt and follow the some rules and processes to be in line with that Weatherproof, the descriptive modifier, it's actually something that will apply to the outfit. It's not about performance, it's about that you can buy a Patagonia uh, jacket and they are adapted to resist to any change in the weather, the cold, the rain, humidity, heat. So they are perfectly adapted to, to that. And finally, fashion mean that, okay, you can be uh, eco-friendly, you can be prepared to resist to anything nature will bring to you, 
but still you want to have you know some style you you want something that looks good so basically what patagonia is telling to their employees is that it's not because we create technical outfit that these technical outfits shouldn't come with without a touch of fashion. So we see that for the Patagonia brand mantra, the combination, the choice of the words, it's really well done. They still they describe what they are associated with. They are strong, they are clear, they are well balanced. So it's really something that can communicate within the company a, a single, simple, but strong and clear message about what they are doing, why they are doing it, and basically who they are.